your attention real briefly to a familiar pericope real quickly. I want to invite your intellect to the gospel according to St. Matthew. Mm -hmm. St. Matthew's gospel, 16th chapter. I want to look at the A clause of that 18th verse. Mm -hmm. St. Matthew's gospel, chapter number 16, looking together at verse 18. And I want to look at that A clause of that 18. Lord's helping you, amen. I want to talk real briefly from this train of thought, holding to the rock. Holding to the rock. My brothers and sisters, I'm thankful again for what God has done in the midst of all of our lives, even on this day. For what God has done is he has again shown us that he is God and besides he, there is none other. It's imperative today that we recognize and understand that God is God all by himself. The reason it's imperative is simply because we live in a day, in a time, in an era wherein we must learn to call on the name of our God. As we investigate our text today, as we look at the world around us, we are some, some of us are even at the point where we anticipate things happening due to the happenings inside or outside of this building. It does not matter today whether it is the coronavirus or any virus, we must note the fact that God is God and he's God all by himself. In order for us to recognize that fact that he's God and God all by himself, reality then of our text says that we cannot know God based upon how we feel. We can't know God based upon what other folks have had to say. We can't know God based upon what even mama and daddy has had to say. But if we are going to recognize that we got to hold to the rock, then the reality is we got to learn to know God for ourselves. But after all, my brothers and sisters, he's more than a house to live in. He's more than a car to drive. He's more than food on our table. He's more than clothes on our back. You must understand that he is the sovereign God of both heaven and of earth. And the reason why I shout today on this evening of this church anniversary 153 years is simply that this fact God thought enough of me that he was saying me that I might have a right to the tree of life. That's enough for us to shout about today because if I go, if I don't go another further, the reality is God has done some things for you that you could not do for yourself. The reality is, yeah, God let us lay down last night. God let us toss and turn all night long. But the reality is early this morning, God woke us up, started us on our way. And the reality is the testimony says if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be? Matthew, as he puts me into parchment, as he writes to us, as he shares with us his conversation with Jesus Christ, what Matthew does is he gives the believer something they can hope to. In other words, what Matthew does is that he shares through the life of Peter. He says that if the church recognizes the fact that God is God through his son, Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I have nothing I have to worry about. That's why when you investigate the text, you know here it is now. Jesus has made his way into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. It's there that as he makes his way, as he comes off of the ship according to the text, according to verses 16, 17, and 18, the Bible says that he's beginning to be compared to those around him. The reality is today as he enters to these coast of Caesarea Philippi, he begins to see many statues, many monuments that are now erected with names on them. And he wants to ask the question, these monuments, these statues that have been erected, whose name have they been erected in? And so what he does is he begins to question the disciples, the same ones that watched him turn water into wine. He questions the disciples, the same one that allowed him to watch him heal a, 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 dead, a, a raised dead man from, from graves. He, he allows them, he asks them the question, who do men say that I am? There it is today, the text says, what Peter does is, Peter being the spokesman of the crowd, what he does, 
does is he opens up his heart. He opens up his mouth. And he says, God, through Jesus Christ, some say that thou art Elijah. Some say thou art Jeremiah. But God says through Jesus Christ, but who do you say that I am? Before I give you the answer to his question, I'm going to tell you, you better know who Jesus is. You better know without a shadow of a doubt. We're, we're living in some last and evil days. Wherein people don't even know what's right or wrong. We're living in some last and evil days where we don't even know ups or downs. You, you better know who Jesus really is. Do I have any help in here? We're living in some days that we can't even call on family, friends, and loved ones. But can I stop to tell you, we got somebody we can call on. Them. Can I tell you what his name is? His name is Jesus. He asked the question, he says, well, who, who do men say that I am? He says, some say you are Jeremiah, some say Elijah, one of the prophets. But he says, Peter, who do you say that I am? Peter gives his, his discourse, he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. My brother and sister, that's enough to shout about right there because of the fact of who Jesus is. He's the son of the living God. Do I have any help here? Can I walk down your street? He's the son of the one that gave us a right to the tree of life. He, he's the son of the one that saved us from our sin. He, he's the son of the one that died in our place. He became our substitute, our propitiation. That's enough for us to tell the Lord, thank you. Do I have any help in here? That's why my brother sister, you got to know without a shadow of a doubt, yes, I know who Jesus is. He says, Peter, I tell you what, because you holler back at me that I am the Christ, the Son of the living God. He moves into verse 18. He says something to him. He said, listen, upon this rock I build my church. Do I have any help in here? The thing I like about the fact is that God, through Jesus Christ, recognized the fact that Peter was holding to the rock. Can I just suggest to somebody in the building today, regardless of what your doctor may say, you ought to hold to the rock. But regardless of what your financial expenses or even incomes are, you better hold on to the rock. Regardless if people walk off from you, can I tell you, you ought to hold on to the rock. Regardless of if you wake up in the morning, they tell you you don't have a job to go to, you better learn to hold on to the rock. Do I have any help in here? This rock is Jesus. Well, he says today, he says to them, he says, Peter, I tell you what, according to the text, he says, upon this rock, I build my church. Do I have any help in here? He establishes the fact that he's able to build this church. Look, what I think about the text is that even in the building of the church, he gives us something to shout about. Why? Because in the building of the church, he also provides the defense mechanism. What he says to us today, he says in the same 18th verse, he says, and the gates of hell. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. It's in, it's in your text, verse 18, if you have thrown it out. He says, and the gates of hell. Do I have any help here? Shall not prevail against it. That word prevail means to win out, win over, to be victorious. But aren't you glad today as long as you recognize you're in the church, the devil can't do you no harm? Can I suggest to somebody our world would be better off if we would learn 
learn to fear Jesus. Our world would be better off if we would have some respect for Jesus Christ. Our world would be better off if we were able to sit down and acknowledge the fact that he's God through Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. How do y'all know? He recognizes and symbolizes Peter's fear. How do you know today? Because when he comes off the ship. Look at the text. The text says, according to verse number 16, 14, it says, in verse 14, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some Elijah, others, Jeremiah is the one of the prophets. Verse 14 says, he recognized there had to be something to this man. But how many help in here? But I just want to park in your driveway real quick and tell you that I don't want you to recognize that there's something about this man. Verse 14 says, I need you to recognize that he is the man. And y'all can forget me. For whatever I go through, I know that I can simply call on the name of God. How do I know? Because when he recognizes the people see him as who he is, he identifies God's sovereignty. But I want you to know he's a sovereign God. I want you to know he can do whatever he wants, when he wants, why he wants, how he wants, and when he get ready, he can stop it too. You got to understand God says that if you're going to hold to the rock, you you got to recognize who I am. Can I tell you, our churches would be better if we recognize Jesus. Can I tell you, our homes would be better if we recognize Jesus. I tell you, our schools would be better if we recognize Jesus. Our children would be better. Our boys, our girls, our men, our women would be better if we learn to recognize who Jesus is. He's not just anybody. He's somebody. The question is, this evening, do you know him? Not based upon what somebody else got to say. The question is, do you know him? For yourself. Do I have a witness in here? What he does is, in verse 14, is he says, he sets self to contrast the fact that Jesus is somebody. But here's what I want you to know today. He's not somebody. He's not anybody. He is somebody. But not only does the rock symbolize Peter's fear, but here it is. The rock symbolizes Peter's foundation. I don't know the same text. Look at it if you please. The text says, according to verse number 15, he says, but whom say ye that I am? Peter answers according to verse 16, it says, that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Can I suggest to somebody in the building today that when you have a foundation, your foundation can't be broken. When you have a foundation, your foundation can't be swayed. When you have a foundation, your foundation can't be deterred. But can I tell somebody in here, when you have the rock of Jesus, the rock of salvation, can I tell you, you own not just any foundation, but how many of y'all know you own a solid foundation? I wish I had a witness in here. You not just own a solid foundation, you own a sure foundation. The rock represents is Jesus. Do I have a witness in here? Peter stands on his foundation. He stands not based upon what they say, but he stands based upon who he is. It says that if the rock symbolizes Peter's foundation, what it really says is that Peter stood on his conviction. Can I tell you in the year 2020, we got to stand on our conviction. Can I tell you, we got to learn to stand on what is both right and and righteousness. For the reality of the sort of church this morning, man, just because it's right, don't make it righteous. Y'all ain't said nothing to me. It, it's right to have same-sex marriages, but the rightness of the same-sex marriage, it, it does not make it righteous. Are y'all in here with me? The reality is that Peter said, listen, I'm going to stand not just based upon what's right, but I'm going to stand based upon what is righteous. Can I drop my kickstand there? And that's the question why I got any righteous folks in the building. Why I got any righteous folk that say for God, I live for God, I'll die. Is there any righteous folks in here that know that you can stand on the conviction of your own heart? How do you know his head says? He says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. When I looked at the text today, not only was he the Christ, it simply means that he is the son of the living God. When I look at it today, what it means is to the believer that he's Christ alone. In other words, he's so low Christ died, which simply 
to say if there is none other like him. I want to tell somebody in the building today, yeah, I thank God for the governor. I thank God for the president, but guess what? They can't do nothing for me. Every night and then, I have to call on the one who's able. Anybody know he is able? I wish you were here because y'all won't say nothing. You said, now unto him who's able. What is he able to do the core of your day? He's able to keep me from falling. He, he's able to present me faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Father, be more power, majesty, and dominion. Is there anybody here? No, God is able. I want to sit there today if I'm like I mean, no God is able. He's able to do for me what I can't do for myself. He's able today to turn midnight to midday. He's able from weeping eyes. Yeah. Anybody thank God that he serve, you serve a God who is yeah. Yeah. able. Yeah. Yeah. Peter says hold, hold to that rock. Yeah. The rock symbolizes his fear yeah. which shares his respect for God. Right. The rock symbolizes his foundation yeah. which says Peter is able to stand in the heart of his Conviction. But right, right. here's what I got to close with today. The rock not only symbolizes fear and foundation, but the rock also symbolizes Peter's faith. Note the text, if you please. He says, upon this rock, not a literal rock, but he says, upon this rock, I build my church. Can I just drop my kicks down there, put a pin in it? Here it is. He says, I build my church. I want to thank God for 153 years. And I thank God for the men and women who come through the Macedonian Missionary Baptist Church. I thank God for those that labor, that suffer, that work, that cook, that did all kinds of things in the church. But can I tell you, it's not their church. I wish I had a witness. Thank God for the Friendship Church 151 years. But I tell them all the time, thank God for your mama. Thank God for your daddy. But this ain't their church. This church belongs to Jesus. Do I have a witness in here? Because how do you know? Because he, he said, I'm the one that will bleed, suffer, and die for the church. Do I have a witness in here? Not only did he bleed, stuff and die, but he was buried for three yeah. long days. Right. But how many of y'all thank God he didn't stay dead? Yeah. Anybody on my right go help me this evening? He, he didn't, anybody on my left go, he didn't stay dead. Any of y'all gonna help me in here? He didn't stay dead. Anybody thank God? Oh! Yeah. Sunday morning. Yeah. Anybody glad? Yeah. Yeah. He got up? Yeah. Not with some power. He got up not with a portion of power. But how many of y'all thank God he got up with all power in the palm of his hand? Peter says to the believers, he says, listen, if you're going to make it in the midst of calamity, chaos, and confusion, what Peter says is you got to learn to hold on to the rock. But how do you know the blessing comes when you begin to hold to the rock. And the text says, in the midst of Peter's fame, the, the text says, Jesus says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Have I got any help here? And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And here's where the blessing comes, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. Have I got any help here? And whatsoever thou Shall loose on earth, shall be loosed in the heaven, and whatsoever thou shall bound in earth, shall be bound in heaven. Can I go to my seat now by telling somebody, yes, we ought to thank God for the rock. I got me help here, yes, we ought to shout hallelujah for the rock. Church will declare a rock of ages a prayer for me. 